In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. peace be with you. Good morning, everyone. As we gather this morning at the cathedral to celebrate the Chrism Mass, let us call to mind our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary and all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. O God, who anointed your only begotten Son with the Holy Spirit and made him Christ and Lord, graciously grant that, being made sharers in his consecration, we may bear witness to your redemption in the world. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring glad tidings to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to captives and release to prisoners, to announce a year of favor from the Lord in a day of vindication by our God, to comfort all who mourn, to place on those who mourn in Zion a diadem instead of ashes, to give them oil of gladness in place of mourning, a glorious mantle instead of a listless spirit. You yourselves shall be named priests of the Lord. Ministers of our God, you shall be called. I will give them their recompense faithfully, a lasting covenant I will make with them. Their descendants shall be renowned among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. To all who see shall acknowledge them as a race the Lord has blessed. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the book of Revelation. Jesus Christ is the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead and ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood, who made us into a kingdom, priests for his God and Father, to him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he is coming amid the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. All the peoples of the earth will lament him. Yes, amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, the one who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. The Word of the Lord. Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus came to Nazareth, where he had grown up, and went according to his custom into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. He stood up to read and was handed a scroll of the prophet Isaiah. He unrolled the scroll and found the passage where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, and to proclaim a year acceptable to the Lord. Rolling up the scroll, he handed it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all in the synagogue looked intently at him. He said to them, Today this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
My dear brothers and sisters in the Lord, as we celebrate the annual Chrism Mass in a special way, I would like to welcome those who are participating at home via live stream. Those social distancing and mitigation efforts to stem the pandemic prevent us from safely having large, a large gathering as usual. Remember that we are always united in faith, prayer, and as the body of Christ. I also welcome the Vickers Foreign or Deans who are present this morning here at the Cathedral to con celebrate this Mass. They come from all regions of our diocese, and in a very real way, they represent the faithful and priests of our diocese who are not able to physically be here due to the current crisis. As a bishop, the Chrism Mass is one of the liturgical celebrations that I look most forward to each year, since it's an occasion for the bishop to gather with the faithful, priests, deacons, and religious of the diocese to celebrate the Eucharist, which is the source and summit of the Christian life and the sacrament of unity in our faith. However, this year's celebration in this mostly empty cathedral is something that I could never have imagined. And yet, this is the reality we face as we fight the battle against the spread of this virus and strive to protect our community, particularly the elderly and the most vulnerable among us, from getting sick. I know how you, the faithful of our diocese, are hungering for the Eucharist. Please know that our priests, deacons, and me as your bishop are hungering to have you back in our parish churches. During this Mass, let us fervently and intentionally pray for an end to this pandemic that we may be able to once again gather as communities of faith to celebrate and receive the sacraments. During this and every Chrism Mass, we do two very important things. First, as the name implies, we bless and consecrate the holy oils, the oil of the sick, the oil of catechumens, and the sacred chrism. And second, the priests of our diocese, those here present, and those who are participating at home will renew their priestly promises and commitment. The holy oils which are blessed today will be distributed to the parishes, missions, and Catholic hospitals in the diocese by the deans who are here present and who will receive them at the end of Mass. They will be used in the celebration of the sacraments throughout the coming year. The fact that the oils are blessed and consecrated by the bishop is a vis visible sign of the unity and communion that a bishop shares with his diocese. Though I'm not able to be at each parish to celebrate the sacraments, the bishop is nevertheless present through this action. The oil of the sick is meant to strengthen and heal those who are suffering from infirmity. The words of the blessing itself bring forth this meaning as the bishop prays. Make this oil a remedy for all who are anointed with them. Heal them in body, in soul, and in spirit, and deliver them from every affliction. The blessing of this oil and the use that it takes is of particular importance at this time, given that so many are suffering in body, soul, and spirit from the effects of the virus. 
The oil of catechumens is used for those who are preparing for baptism and in the sacrament of baptism itself. It is given to cleanse and to strengthen. During the blessing of this oil, the bishop prays, Bless this oil and give wisdom and strength to all who are anointed with it in preparation for their baptism. The sacred chrism, a mixture of olive oil and fragrant balsam, is used in the sacraments of baptism and confirmation, the ordination of priests and bishops, and the dedication of churches and altars. It is meant to sanctify and consecrate. The sacred chrism is used at the Easter Vigil, during which new members of the faith are baptized, confirmed, and receive the Eucharist for the first time. Since I have given permission for these sacraments to be celebrated outside of the Easter Vigil, and at a later date, I ask you to keep the elect of our diocese in prayer as they await full initiation into the Catholic faith and the life of grace. The sacred chrism that is consecrated today at this Mass will also be used on Saturday, August 15th, here at the Cathedral, when Deacon Joshua Bertrand, Deacon Connor Penn, and Deacon Drew Woodkey are ordained priests for our diocese. During the rite of ordination, the palms of the hands of the newly ordained are anointed with sacred chrism, as the bishop says. The Lord Jesus Christ, whom the Father anointed with the Holy Spirit and power, guard and preserve you that you may sanctify the Christian people and offer sacrifice to God. We look forward with great anticipation to this special day for our diocese. And I ask your prayers for our three deacons as they make their final preparations for ordination. At the conclusion of this homily, the priests of our diocese will be asked to stand and renew their priestly promises to be more closely conformed to Jesus Christ in a sacrificial and unselfish way, to be men of prayer, and to be faithful stewards of the mystery of, mysteries of God and the sacraments, which they celebrate with and for God's people. I will also ask you, the faithful of our diocese, to pray for our priests. I ask you to remember to always pray for them, to love and support them, and to never take them for granted. At the Chrism Mass, it's also our tradition to honor priests of our diocese who are celebrating special anniversaries during this year and ask them to stand and be recognized. Unfortunately, we cannot do that this year. I would, however, like to publicly mention them by name today. Priests celebrating 25th anniversaries this year are Father Frances Francisco Hernandez, Father Paul Pecci, Father Michael Pennock, and Father Vincent Superman. Those celebrating the 40th anniversary of their ordination, Father Gary Dowsey, Father Jim Johnson, Father Eric Peters, Father Arthur Pruel, and Father Edward Shelito. Those celebrating their golden or 50th anniversary this year, Father Demetrio Lorden, Father Paul Mangiafico, and Father Henry Riffle. Celebrating 60 years of ordination to priesthood, Monsignor John Sippel, Monsignor Richard Funky, Father Paul Goudreau, and Monsignor John Neff. And finally, celebrating 65 years of priesthood this year, 
Father Roger Bisson, and Father Brendan Lawler. Congratulations to each of you, and thank you for your dedicated and faithful ministry as priests of God. And may the Lord continue to bless you abundantly with his grace and peace. To all the priests serving in our diocese, I say thank you for your ministry, particularly during these challenging days. Thank you for your efforts to stay connected with those whom you serve. I've personally seen and heard all that you're doing to minister to your flock through creative ways, by hearing confessions outdoors, handing out palms on, on Palm Sunday, visiting the sick, using video messages to stay in touch, taking care of those who are poor and hungry, and utilizing live stream, Facebook, YouTube, and other means to bring the celebration of Mass to the people. You have been called to do things in a new way and are being stretched. And as you have responded, and you have responded with the same faithfulness, dedication, and zeal, which mark your ministry, even when we're not in a crisis situation. I'm proud to be your bishop, and I am grateful for the gift of your priesthood. And finally, and as always as your bishop, know that I serve with and beside you. I also ask for and need your prayers, particularly at this time, that I may continue to be the priest, teacher, and shepherd that God has called me to be in leading our diocese. And now, trusting in God's love and mercy, we continue our journey of faith in celebrating this Chrism Mass and this Holy Week. May Mary, Mother of Priests, and of all the faithful, intercede for us that we may grow closer to her Son, Jesus Christ, and fulfill the mission and ministry that has been entrusted to us. Amen. Will the priest please stand? To you, my brother priests, who share the sacrament of holy orders with me, I extend an invitation of renewal and grace as you dedicate yourselves once again to that ministry for which you have been ordained. Together let us pause as we prepare to publicly recommit ourselves to God and his people. Beloved sons, on the anniversary of that day, when Christ our Lord conferred his priesthood on his apostles and on us, are you resolved to renew in the presence of your bishop and God's holy people the promises you once made? Are you resolved to be more united with the Lord Jesus Christ and more closely conformed to him, denying yourselves and confirming those promises about sacred duties towards Christ's church, which, prompted by love of him, 
you willingly and joyfully pledged on the day of your priestly ordination. Are you resolved to be faithful stewards of the mysteries of God in the Holy Eucharist and the other liturgical rites, and to discharge faithfully the sacred office of teaching, following Christ the Head and Shepherd, not seeking any gain, but moved only with zeal for souls. Will the assembly please stand, or those joining us via live stream? As for you, dearest sons and daughters, pray for your priests, that the Lord may pour out his gifts abundantly upon them, and keep them faithful as ministers of Christ the High Priest, so that they may lead you to him, who is the source of salvation. And pray also for me, that I may be faithful to the apostolic office entrusted to me in my lowliness, and that in your midst I may be made day by day a living and more perfect image of Christ, the priest, the good shepherd, the teacher, and the servant of all. May the Lord keep us all in his charity, and lead all of us, shepherds and flock, to eternal life. You may be seated. My brothers and sisters, in today's liturgy, we also focus on the oil which the Church uses for blessing and consecration. In ancient times, oil was used for healing, for strengthening, and for cleansing. The Jewish people used oil in solemn rituals to anoint priests, prophets, and kings. The Church uses oil in the sacraments of baptism, confirmation, holy orders, and the anointing of the sick. Today we bless the three oils that will be used sacramentally in our parishes for the coming year. Bishop Parks, the oil of the sick. O God, Father of all consolation, who willed to heal the infirmities of the weak through your Son, listen favorably to the prayer of faith. Send forth from heaven, we pray, your Holy Spirit, the paraclete, upon this oil in all its richness, which you have graciously brought forth from the verdant tree to restore the body, so that by your holy blessing, everyone anointed with this oil, as a safeguard for body, soul, and spirit, may be freed from all pain, all infirmity, and all sickness. May your holy oil, O Lord, be blessed by you for our sake. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you forever and ever.
Bishop Parks, the oil of catechumens. O God, Father of all consolation, who willed to heal the infirmities of the weak through your Son, listen favorably to the prayer of faith. Send forth from the heavens, we pray, your Holy Spirit, the paraclete, upon this oil in all its richness, which you have graciously brought forth from the verdant tree to restore the body, so that by your holy blessing, everyone anointed with this oil as a safeguard for body, soul, and spirit may be freed from all pain, all infirmity, and all sickness. May your holy oil, O Lord, be blessed by you for our sake. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you forever and ever. Bishop Parks, the oil for Holy Chrism. Will the priests please stand? Let us pray, dear brothers and sisters, to God the Almighty Father, that he bless and sanctify this oil, so that all who are outwardly anointed with it may be inwardly transformed and come to share in eternal salvation. O God, author of all growth and spiritual progress, receive in your goodness the grateful homage that the Church joyfully offers to you through our voice. For in the beginning you commanded the earth to bring forth fruit-bearing trees, among which olive trees would arise as providers of this most rich oil, so that their fruit might serve for sacred chrism. In the spirit of prophecy, David foresaw the sacraments of your grace and sang of the oil that would gladden our faces. After the world's offenses were washed away by the flood, a dove announced the restoration of peace on earth with the olive branch, foreshadowing the gift to come. In the last days, all this has been clearly revealed. When every offense is removed through the waters of baptism, the anointing with this oil causes our, faith, our faces to be joyful and serene. You also commanded your servant Moses to make his brother Aaron a priest by pouring this oil upon him after he had been washed in water. Still greater dignity was added to this when your son Jesus Christ, our Lord, insisted that he be washed by John in the waters of the Jordan. You sent the Holy Spirit from on high in the likeness of a dove. You declared by the witness of the voice that followed, that you were well pleased in him, your only begotten son. And you were seen to confirm clearly what the prophet David had foretold in song, that Christ would be anointed with the oil of gladness above his companions. I now invite my brother priests to extend your right hand in blessing. Therefore, we beseech you, Lord, be pleased to sanctify with your blessing this oil in its richness and pour into it the strength of the Holy Spirit with the powerful working of your Christ. From his holy name, it has, been re it has received the name of chrism. And with it, you have anointed your priests, prophets, kings, and martyrs. May you confirm the chrism you have created as a sacred sign of perfect salvation and life for those to be made new in the spiritual waters of baptism. 
may those formed into a temple of your majesty by the holy holiness infused through this anointing and by the cleansing of the stain of their first birth be made fragrant with the innocence of a life pleasing to you. May those anointed with royal, priestly, and prophetic dignity be clothed with the garment of an incorruptible gift, in keeping with the sacrament you have established. May this oil be the chrism of salvation for those born again of water and the Holy Spirit, and may it make them partakers of eternal life and sharers of heavenly glory through Christ our Lord. The priests may be seated.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the power of this sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, mercifully wipe away what is old in us and increase in us grace of salvation and newness of life through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And, lift them up to the Lord. and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you made your only begotten Son, High Priest of the new and eternal covenant, and by your wondrous design were pleased to decree that his one priesthood should continue in the Church. For Christ not only adorns with the royal priesthood the people he has made his own, but with a brother's kindness he also chooses men to become sharers in his sacred mystery through the laying on of hands. They are to renew in his name the sacrifice of human redemption, to set before your children the paschal banquet, to lead your holy people in charity, to nourish them with the word and strengthen them with the sacraments as they give up their lives for you and for the salvation of their brothers and sisters they strive to be conformed to the image of christ himself and offer you a constant witness of faith and love and so lord with all the angels and saints we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim indeed holy O Lord the fount of all holiness make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Oh. 
the mystery of faith. as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. May we merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say. Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the words, and my soul shall be healed. I will sing for power of your mercies, O Lord. Through all ages my mouth will proclaim your fidelity. I will sing Magnify the Lord with me. Together let us extol his name. I will sing forever of your mercies, O Lord. Through all ages, my mouth will proclaim your I saw the Lord, and he answered me, and delivered me from all my fear. I will sing forever of your mercy. of the Lord and God around those who fear him to rescue them. How gracious the Lord is. Blessed the man who hopes in him. I will sing forever of your mercies, O
Let us pray. We beseech you, Almighty God, that those you renew by your sacraments may merit to become the pleasing fragrance of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Before the final blessing, I would like to offer words of gratitude to our diocesan scola under the direction of Mr. Chris Burke, who was in the back of our cathedral today and observing social distancing with each other. So thank you so very, very much for being with us. I thank our altar servers who assisted today and who are our seminarians, our seminarians for the Diocese of St. Petersburg. And finally, I thank our MCs, Father Carl Melchior and Father Alex Padilla, uh, for their service during this liturgy. The Lord be with you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Our help is in the name of the Lord. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.